Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. This is a demonstration class. Today I will demonstrate the diaphragm. Now as you can see, this is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a muscular tendinous structure. The peripheral part is muscular, you can see, and centrally there will be the central tendon. Now, it lies in between the thorax and the abdomen. It forms the roof of the abdomen. First, we will start holding the diaphragm in the anatomical position. For that, we need to know the anterior, the posterior and superior inferior characteristics. We can see here See, this is the aorta. These are the two pleuras. So, this aorta will be behind along with the pleuras. The pleura is a characteristic feature of the posterior, sorry, the posterior area of the diaphragm. Now, anteriorly, we cannot see here anything, but anteriorly, there will be the attachment. External attachment will be there, that is, its attachment with the zephyr process. It is not clearly visible here. Now, let us cut on it. It is like this. Okay. Now, coming to the superior and the inferior. For that, we will see the attachment of the pericardium mainly. See, this is the pericardium. So, this is superior and this will be inferior. Again, in this diaphragm, we can see, see, this is the pericardium. So, this is the superior and this is inferior, this is superior. Now, we can see the superior part is the thoracic surface. See, this is the thoracic surface. There is the pericardium. This is the thoracic surface. Now, the thoracic surface is having two convexities. One in the right one in the left. The summits of the convexities are known as the cupulae and in the middle it is depressed. So, in the abdominal surface it is forming domes. Now, this is the right dome. I am putting my fist inside it and this is the left dome. I will put another fist inside it. Now, the right dome is related to the anatomical right row of the liver. And the left dome is related to the fundus of the stomach and sometimes will be related with the spleen. This right dome will be a bit higher than the left one. So, this is the overall anatomical position. Okay? Okay. Now, next we will see the openings. Now, coming to the openings, there are three major openings. We will focus on the major openings mainly because the minor openings are not clearly visible. We can see some of the structures which are visible and show them. Okay. Now, coming to the major openings. There are three major openings. The aortic opening, the vertebral opening and the esophageal opening. Now, first we will see the vertebral opening. For that, we can see this is the pericardium. This is the pericardium, and the vena cava will be opening inside the heart. So, this is the vena cover opening. You can see. See, this is the vena cover opening. This is the pericardium, and this is the opening. The vena cover opening is quadrangular in shape, and it lies at the level of T8 thoracic vertebra. Through which the inferior vena cava passes and the right phrenic nerve. Now, coming to the, and this is located on the tendinous part and it is slightly uh, to the right side of the movement. Now, coming to the esophageal opening. The esophageal opening will be outside the pericardium. See, this is the pericardium. Outside the pericardium. This is the esophageal opening. It is a bit left to the midline. 
Now, it lies at the level of T10, quasi vertebra, through which E structures passes. E, E, V, E, it's a memory. E stands for esophagus, V stands for the anterior and posterior vagal drums, and another E stands for the esophageal branches of the left gastric atrium. Now, it is elliptical in shape. And now coming to the third one, that is the aortic opening. See, aortic opening is not a true opening, right? Now, it's not a true opening because you can see here, this is not a true opening. It is U shaped, right? U shaped. See, the sides are supported by the pleura and anteriorly there will be the medial mitoid ligament and posteriorly see there will be the T12 thoracic button. Now it is U-shaped and as it is behind there is a heart and bony structure so this opening will have no movement during the respiratory activities while the others will have respiratory uh, and movements during the respiratory activities like inspiration and expiration. Okay. Now this opening, this arthas, through this the arta structures will pass. What is arta? It is A T A. A stands for the aorta. T is the thoracic duct, and sometimes there will be the azygous veil. Okay. See, this is the anatomical position of this. See, we can see many structures over here. This is the pericardium. Okay. Now see, this is the pericardium. This is the aorta, and here we can see. See, this is the. This one is the esophageal opening. See, esophagus. Esophageal opening. So this is the esophagus here, and. The vena cava opening is yes. See, this is the vena cava opening within the pericardium. Okay, and here another structure we can see. And here we can see. See, this is the dome, the right and the left cupola. Another minor opening is there. That is, we can see the this phrenic nerve we can see. See, this is the phrenic nerve and it is piercing the left cupola. And nothing more is seen here. Thank you for your patient listening and hope you will be fine and have a good day. And rest of the things I think is already discussed in the lecture class. Thank you.